Hello, and thanks for watching this video where we will focus on choosing and applying inclusion and exclusion criteria, screening the literature and bringing together or synthesizing the findings of your literature review. Inclusion and exclusion criteria are very important as they help us refine even more the type of papers that we will include in our literature review. Sometimes it is not possible to specify everything in a research question, even when we write a specific one. So having some further description of what you're interested in comes in really handy. Let's think about this research question. What are the barriers and facilitators to reduce use of restraints in mental health care? This is a quite specific question, but when we actually try to answer it through combining different studies, we might find that there are some more things to consider. For example, are we interested in all mental health settings? Or do we want to focus specifically on inpatient settings only or outpatients? And how do we choose the setting? We need to find some evidence of where it might be problematic. Do we know, for example, that restraints are more frequent in inpatient settings and rarely occur in outpatient settings? We might want to focus on inpatients then. It's also okay to say that you're interested in all mental health care settings. So in your inclusion criteria, you should specify that. Always make sure you ask yourself why you are restricting to a specific setting only. This asking yourself why is what in research terms we refer to as justify. Sometimes it can feel like a technical exercise, but asking yourself why when you consider different options means you're using your critical thinking. Let's move on. Do we want to include studies about all patients? For example, do we want to focus on a specific age range or gender? Again, find some evidence to support that choice. For example, is there a recent report that found that restraints are more likely to occur for younger people? You might want to consider young age as an exclusion cr inclusion criteria. On the other hand, if there is no specific evidence that age or gender are implicated in restraints, just include all patients, regardless of age and gender. Publication year is another criterion you can consider, but please check video one first. Rather than using a tick box, tick box approach and say, I'll only consider papers published within the past five years, I invite you to deploy your critical thinking and consider, for example, whether there have been any major changes in mental health care delivery in the past years. Have there been any major reforms, acts, or guidelines that have changed the delivery of mental health care, specifically around restraints? That could be your cutoff point in terms of publication age. Countries of publication is another one. Your question might be very specific in terms of a service that is only delivered in your country. But for this specific question, do we think the country where the study was conducted would be important to consider? We might, for example, exclude studies where we know that restraint um, is still approved and recommended as an intervention. Always ask yourself if what you're interested in is country specific or not. Design is another one. For example, are you thinking about including quantitative or qualitative papers only or both? This really depends on your question. Usually, if your question has to do with finding out if something works and improve outcomes, it will likely be quantitative. Hopefully, it's some sort of experimental type of research where researchers modify reality by introducing something new. If instead you're interested in the perspectives, experiences, or views of people, you might want to include qualitative studies only. Ask yourself, what is the best way to answer my question? Would it be through talking to people and measuring or measuring something? It might also be a combination of both, what we call mixed method study. Again, if your question could be answered both by quantitative and qualitative studies, this is okay and you don't need to choose one. As a final tip, I would like to remind you that the most important inclusion criterion that you do not need to specify formally, but need to keep in mind all the time, is whether a paper answers your review question or not. You might be tempted to think, well, it does not answer the question directly, but it touches on it marginally, so I will include it. Just don't do it. If you do, you will end up with studies that do not answer your review question, and as with any question we might have in life, 
we would not be content with something that is not actually an answer, would we? So, for example, if you find a study about most frequent family complaints in mental health care settings, do not include it just because you found that families complain a lot about restraints. It is important contextual information, which you could include in your introduction section, but it does not answer your question. So these were some of the most popular inclusion and exclusion criteria. See if you can come up with some more for our question. Once we have determined the inclusion and exclusion criteria, we then move on to screening the literature. Some studies are really easy to screen out. You will be surprised by how many irrelevant studies even a good search picks up. These are the ones that you screen out by just reading the title or abstract. Do you know what an abstract of a paper is? It is the summary of that paper. In a few words, it tells you what the study is about. It can come in really handy if you're not sure whether a study is in or out your review just by reading the title. Um, after you have removed all the studies that are clearly irrelevant to answer your question, you move on to reading a bit more in depth the ones that are potentially included. And this is where your inclusion and exclusion criteria really come in. If, for example, you have specified that you want to focus on inpatient settings only, by reading the potentially included papers, you can determine whether each is in inpatient settings and exclude the ones that are not in inpatient settings. Just remember, always double check your stud the study answers the research question. After deciding which studies you will include, you will need to bring together all the different findings or as we say, synthesize them to provide an answer to your question. You might be tempted to report your study's findings as a shopping list. For example, study one found that nurse age was a barrier in reducing restraints. Study two found that war layer was a factor. But this is not really a synthesis, it's a list. The best way to synthesize your findings for a literature review depends on the data your studies are collecting and analyzing. If you have data in the form of numbers, you might consider combining them together in what is called a meta-analysis. It is quite a complex procedure though, and you should receive some training to perform this. A similar procedure, but for qualitative studies called meta-synthesis. Again, this is not to be taken lightly, it requires some training. So the most popular form of synthesis for a literature review is that of identifying, analyzing, and reporting themes within your findings. What do we mean by themes? We mean patterns within the data. Start by making a list of all the barriers and facilitators identified in, in, by your study. And then ask yourself, what do these barriers and facilitators have in common or where do they differ? For example, you might find some studies report nurse age, Nurse ethnicity and nurse gender are facilitators or barriers of reduced restraint use in mental health settings. What do these have in common? They are all nurse characteristics or more specifically nurse demographics. So nurse demographic could be a theme that you use to report your findings. Try and apply this to all the barriers and facilitators you identified and report findings according to each theme. I hope this serves at least as a starting point for questions you might ask yourself when deciding your exclusion and inclusion criteria, um, when you're screening the literature and when you're synthesizing your findings. There are other stages of literature review that we could not cover, but are also important. Deciding data extraction, so what data you need to extract from studies and also critical or quality appraisal of studies. I will cover critical appraisal of different types of paper in the next videos. So see you there.